Stories and Documentary Network. Welcome to a journey through the vibrant history of the Mali Empire, a West African marvel that left an indelible mark on the continent. Founded in 1240 by the legendary Sundiata Keita after his triumph over the Kingdom of Soso, it emerged as a beacon of power, diplomacy, and military prowess, rooted in the legendary tale of Sundiata Keita, the empire's founder. Mali's history is a saga of resilience, innovation, and cultural achievement. Spanning across the fertile lands of West Africa, this empire emerged as a successor to earlier kingdoms, including the Ghana Empire. Its heart, the city of Niani, became a bustling hub of trade, culture, and intellectual pursuits. It holds a pivotal position in the annals of African history, representing a beacon of civilization during a time when much of the world was captivated by the glories of the East and West. Its significance lies not only in its economic prosperity and military prowess but also in the cultural and intellectual achievements that emerged within its borders. Mali's role as a center of trade, particularly in gold and salt, fueled its economic prosperity and facilitated connections with distant civilizations. The empire's impact resonated far beyond its borders, influencing the trajectory of neighboring regions and shaping the course of trans-Saharan trade. Moreover, Mali's unique blend of indigenous traditions and Islamic influences created a distinctive cultural legacy that continues to shape the identity of West Africa. The purpose of this documentary is twofold. To unveil the captivating history of the Mali Empire and to dispel misconceptions surrounding African civilizations. While often overshadowed by other historical narratives, the Mali Empire's achievements deserve recognition on the global stage. Through this documentary, we aim to bring the story of Mali to a wider audience, celebrating its cultural richness, economic prowess, and contributions to global history. By delving into the Mali Empire's rise, peak, and eventual decline, we seek to unravel the complexities of a civilization that, despite facing internal and external challenges, left an enduring legacy. As we embark on this exploration, we invite viewers to join us in rediscovering the untold chapters of African history and appreciating the profound impact of the Mali Empire on the world stage. To comprehend the rise and significance of this empire, it is imperative to navigate the geographical and historical landscapes that preceded its establishment. West Africa, a vast and diverse region, was home to a multitude of ethnic groups, each with its own rich traditions and cultural practices. The savannas, forests, and deserts of West Africa created a mosaic of environments that influenced the lifestyles and livelihoods of its inhabitants. Before the Mali Empire, the Ghana Empire held sway over the western Sudanese region. Ghana, often referred to as the land of gold, was a vital trading power, leveraging its control over the trans-Saharan trade routes. The wealth derived from the gold and salt trade solidified Ghana's economic and political dominance, establishing a precedent for the empires that would follow. The rise of ancient kingdoms in West Africa laid the groundwork for the eventual emergence of this empire. The kingdoms of Ghana, Takrur, and Gao played pivotal roles in shaping the socio-political landscape. As centers of commerce and cultural exchange, these kingdoms facilitated the movement of goods, ideas, and people, contributing to the rich tapestry of West African civilizations. Trade routes, such as the famous Trans-Saharan Trade Network, became lifelines for these kingdoms. The exchange of gold, salt, ivory, and other commodities not only fueled economic prosperity but also fostered cultural interactions. The wealth accumulated through trade allowed these kingdoms to establish organized governance structures, laying the foundation for more complex political entities. The Mali Empire emerged against the backdrop of shifting political dynamics in West Africa. Sundiata Keita, the epic hero and founder of Mali, played a central role in this transformation. The empire's origins are intertwined with the legendary tale of Sundiata's triumph over adversity, a story that echoes the archetypal hero's journey. Sundiata's victory at the Battle of Kirina in 1235 marked the consolidation of power and the birth of the Mali Empire. Niani, situated along the upper Niger River, became the capital and a symbol of Mali's ascendancy. Sundiata's leadership laid the groundwork for a centralized government, 
fostering stability and creating an environment conducive to economic growth and cultural flourishing. This emergence signaled a new chapter in West African history, characterized by a synthesis of indigenous traditions and external influences. Sundiata's vision and the subsequent leadership of Mansa Musa and others propelled Mali to its zenith, transforming it into a cultural and economic powerhouse that would leave an indelible mark on the continent. The Sudan region, where Mali would later flourish, had been inhabited since the Neolithic period, evidenced by Iron Age tumuli, megaliths, and remnants of abandoned villages. The Niger River, with its regular flooding across the dry grasslands and savanna, created fertile grounds for agriculture over 3,500 years ago. The region's abundant annual rainfall further facilitated the cultivation of cereals such as red-skinned African rice and millet, along with pulses, tuber and root crops, oil and fiber plants, and fruits. Fishing and cattle herding played pivotal roles in sustaining the population, while local copper deposits were exploited for trade. Although gold was likely mined or panned locally, concrete evidence from this period remains elusive. The Mali Empire's founding is intricately tied to the legendary figure of Sundiata Keita, whose life and exploits are immortalized in the epic of Sundiata. Sundiata's tale begins with his birth in 1217 in the small kingdom of Kangaba. Crippled and initially deemed unfit to rule, Sundiata faced adversity from an early age. However, fate had other plans for him, and as he grew older, his strength and wisdom became evident. The turning point came when Sundiata, compelled by a desire to reclaim his family's rightful place, confronted the oppressive Soso king, Sumanguru. The epic Battle of Kirina in 1235 marked Sundiata's triumph over Sumanguru's forces, a victory that reverberated across the region. Sundiata's leadership and strategic prowess earned him the title of Mansa, meaning king or emperor, laying the foundation for the Mali Empire. The Epic of Sundiata not only recounts the hero's journey of Sundiata Keita but also serves as a repository of oral tradition, preserving the cultural and historical heritage of the Malinke people. Sundiata's story embodies the resilience and determination of the Malinke, shaping the collective memory of the Mali Empire's founding. Niani, the heart of the Mali Empire, played a crucial role in shaping the empire's identity and trajectory. Sundiata chose Niani as the capital, recognizing its strategic location along the upper Niger River and its potential as a hub for trade and cultural exchange. The city's significance extended beyond its geographical advantages, it became a symbol of Mali's unity and prosperity. Niani, with its bustling markets, impressive architecture, and vibrant cultural scene, reflected the dynamism of the Mali Empire. The royal court, presided over by the Mansa, became a center of political power and cultural innovation. Mansa Musa, one of Mali's most renowned leaders, later expanded and embellished Niani, solidifying its status as a beacon of civilization in West Africa. The city's layout and architecture showcased the empire's organizational acumen. Niani was not merely a political and economic center but also a melting pot of diverse cultures. Scholars, merchants, and artisans converged in Niani, contributing to the flourishing intellectual and artistic climate that characterized the Mali Empire's golden age. Following the victory at the Battle of Kirina, Sundiata faced the formidable task of consolidating power and establishing a stable governance structure. Sundiata's leadership style was marked by a commitment to inclusivity and justice. He implemented policies that sought to unite the diverse ethnic groups within the empire, fostering a sense of shared identity. Sundiata's consolidation of power extended beyond military triumphs. He implemented administrative reforms, creating a system that integrated local leaders and established a hierarchy of governance. The decentralization of power allowed for local autonomy while ensuring allegiance to the central authority in Niani. The consolidation of power under Sundiata set the stage for the Mali Empire's subsequent expansion and prosperity. It laid the groundwork for a political and social structure that would endure for centuries, with later leaders building upon the foundations laid by Sundiata. This era of stability and unity became a defining feature of the Mali Empire, contributing to its longevity and impact on the broader West African region.
The Mali Empire's socio-economic structure was characterized by a hierarchical system that reflected the complexities of its diverse society. At the pinnacle of this hierarchy was the Mansa, the emperor, who wielded both political and religious authority. The aristocracy, consisting of nobles and military commanders, played a crucial role in governance and often advised the Mansa. Below the aristocracy were various social strata, including merchants, scholars, and artisans. The majority of the population, engaged in agricultural pursuits, formed the base of the social pyramid. Despite the hierarchical nature of society, this empire exhibited a certain degree of flexibility, allowing individuals to ascend or descend the social ladder based on merit, achievements, or royal favor. The emperor, as the paramount figure, held a quasi-sacred status, often considered a link between the earthly realm and the spiritual world. The Mali Empire's social structure, while acknowledging distinctions, emphasized the interconnectedness of its various components, fostering a sense of unity and shared destiny. The economic foundations of this empire were rooted in a diverse range of activities, with agriculture, trade, and mining forming the pillars of its prosperity. The fertile lands along the Niger River facilitated successful agricultural practices, enabling the cultivation of crops such as millet, sorghum, and rice. The surplus from agricultural activities not only sustained the population but also contributed to trade and wealth accumulation. Trade played a pivotal role in Mali's economic prowess, with the empire strategically positioned along major trans-Saharan trade routes. The exchange of commodities such as gold, salt, ivory, and slaves fueled the empire's economic engine. Mali's control over gold mines, particularly in the Bambuk and Burr regions, solidified its reputation as the source of immense wealth. Agriculture was the backbone of this empire's economy, supporting both urban and rural populations. The Niger River's fertile floodplains facilitated productive farming, ensuring a steady food supply for the empire. The agricultural surplus not only sustained local communities but also contributed to trade, fostering economic growth. Trade was a cornerstone of Mali's economic success. The empire's strategic location along the trans-Saharan trade routes allowed it to control and tax the flow of goods. Mali became a key player in the global trade network, with merchants traversing the Sahara to exchange goods with North Africa and the Mediterranean. Timbuktu, one of Mali's prominent cities, emerged as a bustling trade hub, attracting merchants, scholars, and travelers from distant lands. Gold, often referred to as Mali's currency of power, played a central role in the empire's economic prosperity. Mali's control over gold mines, particularly in regions like Wangara, ensured a steady supply of the precious metal. Mansa Musa's famed pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324, during which he distributed vast amounts of gold, underscored Mali's wealth and contributed to its global reputation. The interconnectedness of agriculture, trade, and gold mining created a synergistic economic system that fueled Mali's golden age. The wealth generated from these activities not only enriched the empire but also facilitated cultural and intellectual flourishing, making the Mali Empire a beacon of prosperity in West Africa. Religion and spirituality played a profound role in shaping the cultural identity of the Mali Empire. Islam, introduced to West Africa through trade and interaction with North African and Middle Eastern societies, became a dominant force within Mali. The rulers of Mali, including Mansa Musa, embraced Islam, contributing to the integration of Islamic principles into the empire's governance and daily life. Mosques and religious schools, such as the Sankor Madrasa in Timbuktu, became centers of learning and spiritual guidance. The Malinke people, while adopting Islam, also preserved aspects of their indigenous spiritual beliefs. This syncretic approach to religion created a unique cultural landscape where traditional practices coexisted with Islamic teachings. The pilgrimage of Mansa Musa to Mecca in 1324 not only showcased Mali's wealth but also emphasized the empire's commitment to Islam. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage, which included the construction of mosques and the recruitment of Islamic scholars, left an enduring legacy on Mali's cultural and intellectual fabric. Timbuktu, situated on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert, emerged as a beacon of intellectual and cultural achievement within the Mali Empire. Renowned for its vibrant scholarly community, Timbuktu became a hub of learning, 
attracting scholars, poets, and students from across the Islamic world. The city's libraries and madrasas housed invaluable manuscripts that covered a wide range of subjects, including theology, astronomy, medicine, and mathematics. The Sankor Madrasa, also known as the University of Timbuktu, stood as a testament to Mali's commitment to education. Under the patronage of Mansa Musa, the madrasa became a center for Islamic scholarship, drawing scholars like Al-Mastadi and Al-Qadi Aqib. Timbuktu's libraries, including the famous Ahmed Baba Institute, preserved countless manuscripts, contributing to the intellectual heritage of the Mali Empire. Timbuktu's intellectual achievements extended beyond religious studies. The city became a melting pot of diverse cultures, fostering an environment where scholars engaged in cross-cultural exchanges. Scientific advancements, literary works, and artistic endeavors flourished, leaving an indelible mark on the intellectual history of West Africa. Their art and architecture reflected the synthesis of indigenous traditions and external influences, creating a distinctive aesthetic that celebrated the empire's cultural richness. The Great Mosque of Dejeni, an architectural marvel, exemplified the blending of Islamic and indigenous architectural styles. Constructed with mud bricks and adorned with distinctive wooden elements, the mosque symbolized the harmonious coexistence of different cultural elements. Malian art was not confined to architecture, it extended to sculpture, pottery, and textiles. Sculptures often depicted figures of political and spiritual significance, showcasing the empire's societal values. Pottery and textiles, adorned with intricate designs and vibrant colors, reflected the artistic prowess of Malian artisans. In the realm of literature, the oral tradition of griots, oral historians and storytellers, thrived. Griots played a crucial role in preserving the Mali Empire's history and culture through storytelling, music, and poetry. The Epic of Sundiata, transmitted through generations by Griots, stands as a literary masterpiece that captures the essence of Mali's cultural heritage. Their cultural and intellectual achievements, encompassing religion, scholarship, and the arts, created a legacy that continues to resonate in contemporary West Africa. By fostering an environment where diverse cultural elements could thrive, the Mali Empire left an enduring imprint on the region's identity and contributed to the global tapestry of human civilization. Their leadership was marked by a succession of notable figures who played pivotal roles in shaping the empire's destiny. Sundiata Keita, the legendary founder, demonstrated exceptional leadership during the formative years of the empire. His triumph at the Battle of Kirina not only secured Mali's independence but also laid the groundwork for a stable and prosperous realm. Mansa Musa, one of Mali's most renowned leaders, ascended to the throne in the early 14th century. His reign is often associated with Mali's golden age, characterized by economic prosperity, cultural flourishing, and diplomatic influence. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca not only showcased the empire's wealth but also solidified Mali's standing in the global arena. Other notable leaders, such as the second Mansa Abu Bakr and Mansa Suleiman, contributed to Mali's governance and expansion. The second Mansa Abu Bakr is remembered for his ambitious transatlantic expedition, while Mansa Suleiman further enhanced Mali's influence through diplomatic engagements. The leadership of these notable figures was characterized by a blend of military prowess, diplomatic acumen, and a commitment to the welfare of their subjects. Their contributions left an enduring legacy, shaping the trajectory of the Mali Empire. Their governance structure was designed to maintain stability, foster economic growth, and ensure social cohesion. At its core was the Mansa, the emperor, who held both political and religious authority. The Mansa's authority was complemented by a council of advisors, including nobles, military commanders, and influential figures from various regions of the empire. Provincial governors, known as Farbas, oversaw local administration and reported to the central government in Niani. This decentralized approach allowed for local autonomy while ensuring allegiance to the central authority. The empire's vast territory was divided into provinces, each with its own administrative apparatus, contributing to efficient governance. The aristocracy played a crucial role in governance, advising the Mansa on matters of statecraft, military strategy, and economic policies. 
The input of regional leaders ensured that the diverse needs and concerns of the empire's various ethnic groups were taken into account. The Mali Empire implemented legal and administrative systems that contributed to its stability and longevity. The legal system, influenced by Islamic principles, emphasized justice, fairness, and the protection of individual rights. Qadis, or Islamic judges, were responsible for interpreting and applying Sharia law, ensuring consistency in legal rulings. Administratively, the empire organized its territories into provinces, each headed by a governor. Local administrators oversaw day-to-day -day affairs, including tax collection, trade regulation, and dispute resolution. The empire's reliance on a network of provincial leaders contributed to effective governance and the maintenance of order. Their administrative efficiency extended to economic policies, particularly in the management of trade routes and taxation. Mansa Musa's reign witnessed the standardization of weights and measures to facilitate trade, contributing to the empire's economic prosperity. The introduction of Islam to the Mali Empire was a transformative process that left an indelible mark on the empire's culture, governance, and daily life. Islam entered West Africa through trade routes, facilitated by contact with North African and Middle Eastern merchants. By the 11th century, the influence of Islam had reached the region, gradually gaining traction among the indigenous populations. Sundiata Keita, the founder of the Mali Empire, is often credited with embracing Islam during his reign in the 13th century. While Sundiata himself adhered to traditional spiritual beliefs, he recognized the potential benefits of incorporating Islam into the empire's fabric. This pragmatic approach allowed for the coexistence of Islamic principles with indigenous traditions, creating a syncretic religious landscape. As the empire expanded, subsequent leaders, including Mansa Musa, played instrumental roles in furthering the Islamic identity of Mali. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324 not only symbolized the empire's commitment to Islam but also solidified diplomatic ties with other Islamic states, enhancing Mali's prestige on the global stage. The Mali Empire maintained diplomatic relations with other Islamic states, contributing to the exchange of ideas, trade, and cultural influences. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca, an unprecedented event, attracted the attention of Islamic scholars, rulers, and traders. The Mali Empire's diplomatic overtures strengthened ties with North African states, the Arab world, and even distant regions like the Ottoman Empire. Timbuktu, a prominent city within the Mali Empire, became a vital center for Islamic scholarship and cultural exchange. The Sankor Madrasa, part of the University of Timbuktu, attracted scholars from across the Islamic world. This intellectual hub fostered a climate of cross-cultural engagement, enabling the exchange of scientific knowledge, literature, and religious ideas. Trade relations with other Islamic states flourished, especially along the trans-Saharan trade routes. Mali's strategic location allowed it to control and benefit from the trade of gold, salt, and other commodities. This economic prosperity contributed to the empire's diplomatic standing as Mali became a sought-after ally in the Islamic world. Islam's influence on the Mali Empire permeated various aspects of culture and daily life. Religious practices, such as daily prayers, fasting during Ramadan, and the pilgrimage to Mecca, became integral components of daily life for many Malians. Mosques, including the Great Mosque of Dajeni and the Sankor Madrasa, stood as architectural marvels and centers of spiritual guidance. The adoption of Arabic script facilitated the recording of historical events, religious texts, and scholarly works. Timbuktu's libraries housed numerous manuscripts written in Arabic, contributing to the preservation and dissemination of knowledge within the empire. Islamic principles influenced legal and ethical norms, contributing to the Mali Empire's legal system. Qadis, Islamic judges, played a key role in interpreting and applying Sharia law. This legal framework emphasized justice, fairness, and the protection of individual rights. Socially, the Mali Empire's embrace of Islam contributed to a shared sense of identity among its diverse population. While maintaining cultural diversity, Islam provided a unifying force that transcended ethnic and regional boundaries. 
The empire's leaders, including Mansa Musa, used their Islamic identity to strengthen internal cohesion and foster a sense of collective purpose. This empire's golden age reached its zenith under the leadership of Mansa Musa, a ruler whose legacy is synonymous with wealth, cultural flourishing, and diplomatic influence. One of the defining events of this era was Mansa Musa's historic pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. This pilgrimage, also known as the Hajj, not only demonstrated Mansa Musa's devout commitment to Islam but also showcased the immense wealth of the Mali Empire. The grandeur of Mansa Musa's pilgrimage captured the imagination of those who witnessed it along the route to Mecca. Mansa Musa traveled with an entourage that included thousands of attendants, soldiers, and servants, all adorned with gold and carrying precious gifts. The extravagant display of gold, which included distributing gold dust and nuggets to the people he encountered along the way, earned Mansa Musa a reputation as one of the wealthiest individuals in history. The economic impact of Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was significant. In each city he visited, Mansa Musa spent lavishly, purchasing goods, commissioning buildings, and contributing to local economies. His generosity, coupled with the immense wealth of the Mali Empire, left a lasting impression on the regions he traversed, enhancing Mali's reputation as a center of prosperity. The pilgrimage also had diplomatic implications, as Mansa Musa met with rulers, scholars, and traders along the way. These interactions fostered diplomatic ties and increased Mali's influence in the wider Islamic world. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was not just a religious duty. It was a strategic move that elevated the Mali Empire's status and solidified its place as a major player on the global stage. This empire's golden age was characterized by unprecedented economic prosperity, much of which was driven by the empire's control over valuable trade routes and resources. Mali's strategic location along the trans-Saharan trade routes, coupled with its monopoly on the gold and salt trade, contributed to a flourishing economy. Gold, often referred to as the currency of power, was a key driver of Mali's wealth. The empire's control over gold mines in regions like Bambuk and Burr allowed it to amass vast amounts of the precious metal. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage, with its lavish displays of gold, further enhanced Mali's reputation as a center of immense wealth. In addition to gold, salt was a vital commodity in trans-Saharan trade. Mali's control over salt mines in the Tagaza region facilitated trade with North African states, where salt was a precious resource. The taxation of trade along these routes contributed significantly to the empire's coffers. Mansa Musa's emphasis on economic policies, such as the standardization of weights and measures, streamlined trade and contributed to the empire's economic stability. The resulting economic prosperity had a cascading effect, influencing cultural and intellectual pursuits and elevating the standard of living for many within the empire. The Golden Age of the Mali Empire was marked by the construction of architectural marvels that reflected the empire's wealth, cultural sophistication, and commitment to Islam. Mansa Musa, in particular, played a pivotal role in commissioning grand structures that showcased the empire's prosperity. One of the most renowned architectural achievements was the Great Mosque of Dijeni. Located in present-day Mali, this mosque is the largest mud-brick building in the world. Built in the 13th century, it exemplifies the fusion of indigenous architectural techniques with Islamic design principles. The mosque stands as a testament to the empire's architectural ingenuity and commitment to Islam. In Timbuktu, another city at the heart of the Mali Empire's cultural and intellectual achievements, Mansa Musa contributed to the construction of the Sankor Madrasa. This center of learning became a hub for Islamic scholarship, attracting scholars from across the Muslim world. The architectural magnificence of the Sankor Madrasa, with its distinctive minarets and courtyards, symbolized the empire's dedication to education and intellectual pursuits. The construction of such architectural marvels was not only a display of wealth but also a means of solidifying the Mali Empire's cultural and religious identity. These structures, whether mosques or madrasas, became symbols of the empire's commitment to Islam and its desire to create enduring legacies that would withstand the test of time.
The decline of the Mali Empire was marked by a combination of internal struggles that weakened the once mighty civilization. One significant factor contributing to internal strife was succession disputes and power struggles among the ruling elite. The decentralized nature of Mali's governance, which granted considerable autonomy to regional leaders, often resulted in competing claims to the throne, leading to internal conflicts. The decline in effective leadership after the reign of Mansa Musa further exacerbated internal challenges. Successive rulers struggled to maintain the stability and prosperity that had characterized the Golden Age. Weak leadership, coupled with factionalism among the elite, weakened the empire's ability to address emerging threats and internal discontent. Economic challenges also played a role in internal struggles. Despite the wealth generated by the gold and salt trade, mismanagement of resources and economic decline contributed to discontent among the population. The burden of taxation, coupled with the diminishing effectiveness of the trans-Saharan trade routes, further strained the economic foundation of the empire. Social factors, including a decline in cultural and intellectual pursuits, also contributed to internal unrest. The once thriving centers of learning, such as Timbuktu, saw a decline in patronage and scholarly activities. This diminishing intellectual vibrancy weakened the cultural fabric that had been a hallmark of the Mali Empire's golden era. The Mali Empire faced external threats that further hastened its decline. One significant challenge came from the rise of neighboring states and the expansion of other West African kingdoms. The Songhai Empire, in particular, emerged as a powerful force that sought to challenge Mali's dominance in the region. The Battle of Tondibi in 1591 marked a decisive defeat for the Mali Empire at the hands of the Songhai forces, signaling a shift in regional power dynamics. The trans-Saharan trade routes, vital for Mali's economic prosperity, also faced external threats. The rise of maritime trade routes and European exploration diverted trade away from the Sahara, diminishing Mali's strategic importance in the global trade network. The decline in trade revenue further weakened the empire's economic foundations. External invasions, notably from the north, also contributed to the Mali Empire's vulnerability. The Tuareg, Berber nomads from the Sahara, and later the Moroccan forces, sought to control key trade routes and exert influence over the region. These invasions disrupted the empire's stability and strained its ability to defend its borders effectively. Despite its decline and fall, the Mali Empire left a lasting legacy that continues to resonate in West African history and beyond. The empire's cultural achievements, particularly in the realms of art, architecture, and scholarship, endure as a testament to the vibrancy of West African civilizations. The legacy of the Mali Empire is prominently seen in the intellectual and cultural achievements of Timbuktu. While the decline of the empire contributed to a temporary halt in the city's intellectual pursuits, Timbuktu's legacy as a center of learning persists. The manuscripts preserved in its libraries offer insights into a rich intellectual tradition that shaped the region's history. The syncretic blend of indigenous traditions with Islamic influences fostered during the Mali Empire's Golden Age, left an enduring mark on the cultural identity of West Africa. The Great Mosque of Dajeni, the Sankor Madrasa, and other architectural marvels stand as tangible reminders of the empire's commitment to both Islam and local traditions. Their economic influence is reflected in the enduring significance of the gold trade in West Africa. The region's gold resources, which once contributed to Mali's wealth, continue to play a crucial role in the contemporary economies of countries in the region. Despite its decline, the Mali Empire's legacy extends beyond the physical remnants of its past glory. The Empire's ability to create a cultural and intellectual renaissance during its golden age remains an inspiration for contemporary efforts to preserve and celebrate the diverse heritage of West Africa. The architectural marvels of the Mali Empire stand as enduring symbols of West Africa's rich pre-colonial history, with structures like the Sankor Mosque in Timbuktu gaining international recognition. Mali architects, faced with the scarcity of stone in the region, ingeniously crafted buildings using beaten earth, banco, reinforced with wood, a distinctive feature that remains a hallmark of the region's architectural heritage. Wooden beams often protrude from the exterior surfaces, adding a unique visual element to these structures. Despite the limitations in building materials, Mali's mosques, in particular, 
are imposing multi-storied edifices characterized by towers, massive wooden doors, and tiered minarets. Notable examples, such as the Sankor Mosque, still grace the landscape, showcasing the empire's architectural prowess. Other significant structures, like fondacks, warehouses, designed for storing goods before transportation, featured up to 40 apartments for merchants to reside in. The baked mud buildings of Mali, including the grand mosques at Mopti and Dejeni, continue to impress today, even though some are reconstructions from the early 20th century. Excavations at Niani, the empire's capital, have unveiled the remnants of houses with stone foundations, confirming historical sources that indicate wealthier members of society constructed stone houses. Arab chroniclers provide descriptions of another style of domestic building, employing beaten earth bricks with ceilings crafted from wooden beams and reeds, forming a distinctive conical roof. Flooring, in this case, was composed of earth mixed with sand. The Mali Empire stands as a monumental chapter in African history, leaving an indelible mark on the continent's cultural, economic, and intellectual landscapes. Its rich tapestry of achievements, from the legendary figures of Sundiata Keita and Mansa Musa to the architectural marvels of Timbuktu, has contributed to the shaping of West African civilizations. The story of the Mali Empire is just one chapter in the rich tapestry of African civilizations, Acknowledging the richness of Africa's history is essential for dispelling historical misconceptions and fostering a more comprehensive understanding of the continent. African civilizations, with their diverse cultures, languages, and contributions to science, art, and governance, have played a crucial role in shaping the course of human history. If you've enjoyed this journey through the Mali Empire's history and the broader context of African civilizations, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.